And here we are, my friends. We're at chapter 13, verse 19 of the book of Job. Who is he who will plead with me? For now, if I hold my tongue, I shall give up the ghost. Notes. Uh, Job is basically saying here that he has absolutely nothing to lose, and he will make his case before God, given the chance. And he will get it. Verse 20. Only do not two things unto me, then will I not hide myself from you. Withdraw your hand far from me, and let not your dread make me afraid. Notes. Take away the physical pain, and help me not to fear, and my protest, and my greatest fear is that I have displeased you, is what he's saying. And of course I'm talking about God. Verse 22. Then you call, and I will answer. Or let me speak, and you answer me. <clears throat> Notes. Job is praying to God for an audience with him, irrespective of what the outcome actually is. Verse 23. How many are my iniquities and sins? Make me to know my transgressions and my sin. Notes. Now these friends of his had claimed that he is such a great sinner. He's wanting an opportunity only... Uh, he's saying, I will only take your word for that, not theirs. Verse 24. Wherefore hidest thou your face, and holdest me for your enemy? Note. Job does believe that the Lord will vindicate him, but he asks if there is a present alienation and desires to be made acquainted with the cause of it, if in fact it does exist. Verse 25. Will you break a leaf driven to and fro, and will you pursue dry stubble? Notes. Job compares himself to two of the weakest things of nature, a withered leaf and a morsel of dry stubble. Verse 26, For you write bitter things against me and make me to possess the iniquities of my youth. Notes. Now, considering what the indictment against him might be, he can only suppose that, the, that these old and long forsaken sins are now being remembered and brought up against him. In other words, he's beginning to think that maybe something he did long, long time ago has somehow made its way to his doorstep and is now being punished for it. That's really not the case. Verse 27, You put my feet also in the stocks, and look narrowly unto all my paths. You set a print upon the heels of my feet. Notes. Now this was a figure of speech on Job's part, meaning that it seemed as if God had made him a captive uh, to his terrible plight. Verse 28, And Job, as a rotten thing, consumes as a garment that is moth-eaten. Notes, now this is kind of a figure of speech, an allusion to the character of the disease from which he is suffering very horribly from. Ver, uh, chapter 14 now, Man who is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Notes, now, you don't have to be Einstein to figure out that that is true. It comes from events that are a bit above our head back in the book of Genesis, where the sin nature was passed on from one man to another, uh, from rebellion against God. And uh, I won't go into explaining that, because I could go on for hours. But anyways, verse 2. Uh, you should probably read or listen to my teaching on Genesis. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow, and continues not. Notes. Now, this first phrase right here is used actually quite frequently in Scripture. You can find it in Psalms chapter 103, verse 15, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 1. You can find it a little bit later, a couple of verses later in the book of Isaiah chapter 28. You can find it in James chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. You can even find it in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24. Verse 3, And do you open your eyes upon such an one, and bring me into judgment with you? Notes. 
Now this question right here is the age-old question that man often asks God. Why would God, who is able to create whatever he desires, go to such lengths and trouble to redeem such a one as me? Verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Notes. This question and the answer direct themselves to the inability of man to save himself. Therefore, salvation had to be outside of man, and that it was. It was Christ our Lord, of whom Job probably had maybe a very, very faint glimmer of understanding of, seeing that he's thousands of years... Huh, well, the cross was much later. Okay, verse 5. Seeing his days are determined... The number of his months are wise with you. You have appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Notes. Now the lifespan of every individual is fixed by God. However, it can be cut short or prolonged according to disobedience or obedience. It could also be cut short or actually lengthened by... Uh, you know, just simple healthy eating. But God says that you're going to live this certain amount of time and I'm going to call you home, but certain things can waver it forward and backwards. Verse 6. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. Notes. Now the idea is when this lifespan is over, he should have accomplished that was actually intended. Okay? Uh, well, regrettably, only a precious few are accomplished, or they have actually accomplished their task. Not many people actually make it that far. Okay, verse 7. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. <coughs> Notes. Well, in this one verse, we are told that even if man does fall on hard times, if he will believe God, the fallen tree will sprout again. And that's exactly what will happen to Job. Verse 8, Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant. Notes, the water of the word can actually bring life into an individual's soul and body and basically renew the person. And that's what's going to happen here. Verse 10. <clears throat> but man dies and wastes away. Yes, man gives up the ghost and where is he? Notes. Now before Christ and even before the law, the eternal abode of man was only very, very dimly understood they probably had a very good idea that there was a good place and a bad place, and that was it. But they certainly knew that things were not ended whenever a person died. Verse 11, As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decays and dries up, so man lies down and rises not. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Notes. Now, Job is not addressing himself to the resurrection, but rather the brevity of his own life. Nothing but a vapor. Verse 13. <clears throat> oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that you would keep me secret until your wrath be passed, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. Notes. Due to what has happened to him, Job is confused here and is asking for relief, even if it means dying. Verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Notes. <clears throat> very, very plainly, this passage proclaims the coming resurrection, although it was very, very dimly understood. Correct understanding would come only with Christ and the truth that he would ultimately give us. And he did so through the Apostle Paul. You can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. Verse 15. You shall call, and I will answer you. You will have a desire 
to the work of your great hands. Notes. Well, this passage right here tells us that the great creation of God as it regards man is not going to be lost. Uh, that which the Lord originally intended will ultimately be carried out. And uh, basically what God intended was for the Garden of Eden to basically be the entire world, but sin and rebellion came in, and well, here we are right now. It will eventually be fixed up, and I will cover that later on. Verse 16, For now you number my steps. Do you not watch over my sin? Notes. Now, it should be plainly obvious, but people need to understand that God pays very minute attention and records and even catalogs everything that a man does. Verse 17. My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and you sew up my iniquity. Notes. Now, the transgression of man and the sins can only be erased by faith in Christ and what he did at the cross. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 through 18. But keep in mind that Job would only have a very dim understanding of these things. Verse 18. And surely the mountains falling come to naught, and the rock is removed out of his place. The waters wear the stones. You wash away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and you destroy the hope of man. Notes. Now, of course, we're talking about hopes that aren't anchored directly in the Word of God, okay? Verse 20. Well, if you're praying for something that God is not willing to give, you're just basically wasting your time. That would be a good example. Verse 20. You prevail forever against him, and he passes. You change his countenance and send him away. Notes. Now, it's pretty obvious that man cannot prevail against the living God, irrespective as to what he might actually do. There's simply no way to do any damage to God. Verse 21. His sons come to honor, and he knows it not. And they are brought low, but he perceives it not of them. Notes. Now, this passage answers the question of rather the uh, of whether the saints of God in heaven know what is transpiring with their loved ones on earth. In effect, it says that they know nothing of the things that happen on earth. So this destroys the Catholic myth of praying to saints in heaven. Okay, If you're a Catholic and you're offended by that, hey, it's his word, not mine. Verse 22. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Notes. Now, this concerns Job's present situation. The inspiration guarantees that these things were said, and by the ones to whom they are attributed. However, inspiration does not guarantee that everything is said that is actually true. In fact, virtually all that is said by the friends of Job uh, would have to be concluded as being incorrect in one way or another. And most of what Job says is actually correct. Chapter 15. Oh, and here we go. We're going to have Eliphaz the Temanite running his mouth. Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite and said, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge and fill his belly with the east wind? Note. Now, Eliphaz, after Job has said all of these things, he says here that everything that Job has said is nothing but hot air once again. He has to hear that once again from his so-called buddies. Verse 3. Should he reason with unprofitable talk, or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? Yes, you cast off fear and restrain prayer before God. Notes. Now here Eliphaz is belittling Job's faith, which seems to be growing. Verse 5. For your mouth utters your iniquity, and you choose the tongue of the crafty. Notes. And here we have, once again, he is accusing Job now of being deceitful and crafty and doing something behind everyone's back. What a pal he is. And it uh, looks like we'll have to pick up in chapter 15, verse, uh, verse 6 of the book of Job. Thank you, and God bless. See you later. Bye-bye.